Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today for the uh, for the, our annual community report card. Um, and following the report card, uh, we will move immediately into our AGM. Um, it's a it's a pleasure to have everyone here. Uh, we 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 appreciate the feedback, uh, the opportunity to help this community and the communities around us move forward from an economic development perspective. Um, and as I mentioned, after our, the initial slides, which you, we're going to share the report card results and some of the initiatives that we are, we've undertaken, uh, we'll move directly into the AGM component of, of today's session. Um, I'd like to rec recognize a number of people that are on the call. Everybody's important to us um, in, in the work we do, but certainly, um, you know, the stakeholders that help fund and support us, represented by, you know, Mayor, um, Mayor Judy wilson Che and Mayor Powell. Uh, and Mayor O'Brien. There are also a number of counselors from our, our stakeholder group as well. And of course, there's a number of senior leaders. Uh, you know, I, I should, by rights, list everybody that's on the call because each and every one of you are important to the work that we do. Um, invariably, I will miss somebody, but uh, it certainly is, uh, it's really very important to see the, the attendance that we have and be able to share the, the work that we're doing on your behalf. Today's session will be recorded. Um, so if you don't want to be on a video somewhere, uh, just uh, turn your video off. Uh, we will appreciate that if you can, during the presentation, if you can keep your microphone muted, uh, that, will, that will also help, um, you know, help us uh, in, during the presentation. So again, thank you for being here and we'll jump directly into the, the community report card. First and foremost, I think as everybody on this, car, on this call or this, uh, this session would re recognize in your own work, in your own circle, uh, whether it's a COVID bubble or not, it really depends on, on the team that you have around you. And it depends on the people um, you know, that work with you each and every day to accomplish the objectives that we set forth. And Ignite, Knowledge Park and Planet Hatch is really no different. Um, the, the team that we have is second to none. It's an outstanding team. Um, it, it has a broad mixture of, of lifestyles and backgrounds. Um, you know, we've got a, we've got a, a, a representation that's global. Um, people from around the world are participating in the activities that we do here each and every day at Ignite, Knowledge Park, and Planet Hatch. And, and I think it's worthy of spending enough, enough time on this slide so everybody can appreciate our team. Uh, and I'm going to go through the, the team and just give you a, an example of the work that they do or the title that they carry in our organization. So Sarah Corey Hollihan is with us as she is the director with Ignite Fredericton, responsible for one of our key areas of, of economic development growth and the advocacy that requirements that we have in economic development. Adam Peabody, he's the director of Planet Hatch. Uh, you will see Adam hanging around all things to do with startups and he, he leads the Planet Hatch team. We have um, uh, Kim Hollihan, she, she is the manager of our marketing and communication activity, and she would work with a lot of our partners and stakeholders in telling the story of successes and helping articulate the challenges and opportunities that we have in our region. Um, working with Kim is Rochelle Halfke, and she is our marketing uh, coordinator. She works on a lot of the activities around our social media, and, and, her, and team, her and Kim work as a, as a defined team. Nasheen Ali uh, is responsible for our population growth specialist. You hear more, you'll hear more about immigration, population growth, workforce development throughout the presentation. Nasheen's role is to, is to grow our population. Uh, and that is broader than just immigration. Immigration is a critical uh, component and you'll see that in our presentations. But Nasheen works on, on the context of, of population growth and, and making sure that you know, we're, we're, we are an attractive community and making sure that, uh, that people who settle in our community uh, have gainful employment and access to the services that they need. Wade Harrington uh, is now becoming a very senior a fixture with our organization. He's been here for a while. He's the Director of Infrastructure and Strategic Investments. And you know, for, for those that see and drive up down Knowledge Park every day, Wade is the, is the owner of Knowledge Park from a, from a management perspective point of view. Uh, he takes care of uh, Knowledge Park in its entirety. And his, one of his team members that works uh, with him is Tony McFawn. Tony is the Operations Manager for Knowledge Park. Um, Michelle Hull, uh, she's our Office Manager. She's really uh, my boss and all of our boss. Um, she keeps us uh, moving forward daily, um, helps us immensely in, in the work that we do. Uh, and we could not, you know, we could not do the things we do without having Michelle in, in the role that she's in. 
Kelly Smith is, is, helps a lot of our entrepreneurs on a daily basis. She's a business startup specialist uh, working out of Planet Hatch. Amgad Zaki, he is the responsible for the local immigration partnership that, we, that we've been running for a number of years. Um, so helping our newcomers uh, settle into this region, helping all of the stakeholders that are working on immigration, coordination of the work they do um, is, is supported by Amgad. Daniel mentioned one of our newer uh, employees is responsible for the operations elements at Planet Hatch. Um, so if you are in Planet Hatch, um, you need something done or looking for some support, Daniel would be the, the person to, to go to. Annabella Weaver, she is our program coordinator again at Planet Hatch. So when you're taking courses and, and participating in events at, at Planet Hatch, Annabella would be the individual that's supporting that. Andrew Lockhart um, is the economic development specialist Andrew works with the local market and some investment attraction files, but predominantly in the local market, helping our entrepreneurs and local market companies um, meet their objectives and, and help them through, you know, developing their own businesses. Janet Moser, uh, Janet um, come, come, comes to us from, you know, the transfer of some, some functions at the chamber to Ignite, which I'll expand about a little bit further in the, in the presentation. Janet's managing director for the immigration strategy and immigration services. So the direct portfolio of immigration falls uh, into Janet's responsibility. Tara Levitt is administrative and client services coordinator. Uh, you'll see her floating between Ignite, Planet Hatch, Knowledge Park. Um, she helps us all uh, make sure that the day-to-day -day activities of the things we do are, are running smoothly. And that is the team. And I, I, I can speak on behalf of the board as well. I know that the board is extremely proud of the work this team does. And, and certainly they deserve, um, you know, uh, appreciation for, for everything they do and the, the commitments they've made to our organization. Much like our team, um, we don't do this by ourselves. Um, you know, uh, economic development is a, is a team sport uh, by, <laughs> At best, uh, it takes an awful lot of people, an awful lot of organizations to be pulling uh, in the same direction, to, you know, to be um, supporting initiatives, uh, to be supporting the, the, the community, um, and to work collaboratively uh, with, within, within the ecosystem that's created here in Fredericton for, for economic development. So partners and stakeholders are, are critical to what we do. I often say, you know, if, you, if you're looking, and, and, and we, we treat these, these relationships as nurtured relationships, or we, we protect them because um, we want to be seen as a, as a strong partner to our stakeholders and partners, and, and our partners to us are, are critical to us. So we want to protect those relationships. I often say that, you know, if, if at some point in between, down the road you want to you wanna eat apple pie, you better plant an apple tree and you better nurture that apple tree as it moves forward. And that's exactly what we do with our, with our partnerships. Each and every one of them is important to us, but there's some that, you know, we work with more, um, more often or on a regular basis. You know, organizations like Opportunities New Brunswick, the work that they do at a provincial level, um, but they partner and collaborate with the local economic development teams. You know, we could not do what we do without them. The New Brunswick government in its entirety, you know, we have a, a number of ministerial offices that we work with, whether it's uh, Minister Wilson or uh, Minister Carty or Ms. Minister Carr. Uh, we work those those uh, those offices on a regular basis to, to to work on the economic development and issues that we're we're involved in. The Canadian government uh, in itself through ACOA is a is a strong supporter. Uh, some of the programs that we run are funded by by ACOA, and you know we couldn't bring some of the services to to the entrepreneurs that we do without having ACOA. The Chamber of Commerce, uh, we work with them hand in hand on a day to day basis. Um, you know they it's almost sometimes there's a it's hard to see the difference between the two teams who work that closely uh, you know we're almost always at the same initiative um, the COVID example of, of, of things that have been impacting us lately is just another example of, of how we work collaboratively together um, and worth mentioning but we also have private companies and, and large organizations like RBC and Grant Thornton um, you know NBAF is now co-located in the in in uh, Ignite offices um, but we work every day on files with, with them as well. So we, couldn't, we could not do this without our partners and stakeholders. And, and I would include in that group the, the boards of Ignite and Knowledge Park. Uh, we couldn't do what we do without those boards, without the board support. So uh, we, we appreciate that. And of course, you know, some of our most significant partners are found in you know, the town of Oromocto uh, with the support that they provide to us, um, the village in New Maryland, uh, the support that they provide as well. And of course, the city of Fredericton. 
even though those are our supporting stakeholders, you know, we work on, a, on agendas and objectives that fall well outside of those borders. And sometimes they're, they're provincial and sometimes they're national. Um, but we get, we get great support from all our stakeholders and partners in, in the economic development work that we do. 2019 and 2020 um, really represent what I describe as the sunset years of a Vision 2020 um, uh, exercise that took place in 2013. Vision 2020 was the document that guided this community and those of us uh, such as Ignite Fredericton that work in economic development in this community. It guided us you know, in towards our towards our priorities and our initiatives, and it was it was struck at a you know with the community in its entirety. Uh, I think back at that time, there's over 400 individuals, businesses, and people that orchestrated uh, the the Vision 2020 exercise and set forth the 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 strategic plan that we've been operating from. Well, we're in the sunset years of that, and one of the things we did last year was step back. Um, took a critical look at the things we were doing. We did a bit of a strategic review. Uh, we did that in terms of our strategies. We did that in terms of initiatives. We did that in terms of structure. Uh, are we positioned and ready for the future? Uh, because as you know, for the last number of years, there's been significant change happening in all of our communities. Um, you know, COVID, we'd be remiss not to talk about COVID during an update, but you know, it's one example that's completely changed some of the forward-looking agendas that we've had. So it's, it, it's constant, a requirement for us to continue to monitor and review. And during that review, we, we really found that the framework of Vision 2020 is in fact very solid and is in fact going to guide us for the next number of years going forward. You know, it led to things like in 2016, this community was recognized as startup capital of Canada. Um, only, you know, three short years after we started the, the initial uh, initiative around uh, the startup support. So with that, with that solid nature of an, a forward-looking agenda, we're quite comfortable that the elements of that will still stay in place. But what we have done is we've translated them into four specific pillars that Ignite uh, is sort of focused on at this stage. So Ignite, Knowledge Park, and Planet Hatch. The economic growth and advocacy pillar, that's sort of self-explanatory. It's really the hard, hardcore programs around investment attraction, local market support, things like that. We have entrepreneurship or entrepreneurism and innovation. That by and large is the work that Plan and Hatch does. Population growth and workforce development, um, you know, that's where our, the work that uh, Janet and AMGAD and Sheen does, uh, that's, that focuses on, um, you know, growing our population, but also making sure our population is prepared for the future of work. Um, not only is, is the environment changing, but the type of work that is changing. And I think you all recognize that over the next number of years, some of the jobs that, you know, that are going to be in place don't even have job titles at this stage. Um, the last, the last um, pillar that, that we work on is infrastructure and strategic investments. And by and large, you could put Knowledge Park's brand there. That's the, the, the buildings and the activity we do in creating infrastructure, uh, the clustering strategy, and the most recent uh, strategic investment around the cyber center. So with the framework, we then we then sort of structured around some significant priorities, and from those priorities, uh, we were able to put verbs in our sentences and move forward in in specific initiatives. And I just like to highlight a few of those on this slide. So, uh, from strategic priorities in 2019, um, we all are seeing a significant change in the local market. The, the the recent government change brought new focus on small and medium enterprise network, and we're in lock stock. Uh, alignment with that. The local market is going to see some significant change over the next number of years um, beyond COVID. I'll talk about that uh, towards the end of the presentation, but somewhere around 75% of the companies in the local marketplace in Canada are going to change hands and we need to be prepared for that. So there's a lot of energy and effort needs to be put in the local market. It's things like how do we help local market become succession ready or succession plan? Um, you know, how can we help local companies diversify their market? How can we help companies, you know, find new ways to channel, um, you know, their, their opportunities? Investment attraction is going to continue to be a key strategy. Investment attraction is important for a number of reasons. Um, it, it, we need to have wealth creation. We need to have economic investment. We need to have investment funds that are coming from outside the province uh, or outside of our region to grow the pie, to grow to be a larger economic development force. It isn't just about the commercial activity that we generate. 
Um, you know, it isn't just about, you know, the, that commercial activity in a local marketplace. It's about new insertion of, of capital, new insertion of, of investment, uh, and, and we need to continue to focus on that. Population growth and immigration strategy will continue for the next number of years to be a significant strategy that we work on. Uh, we're in our second year of strategic plan. Uh, Janet Moser and Sheen will talk about that a little bit later on. Workforce development and future work and experiential learning, those types of activities are becoming much more important. Uh, the work skills that people need today are completely different than some of the skills that were required a few years ago. Not to say that those skills aren't still important. We, we need truck drivers, we need backhoe, you know, excavator workers, but we also need, you know, the new jobs that are coming through, the new elements that are coming through cybersecurity. Some of the jobs identified in cybersecurity um, aren't, aren't, even, aren't even invented yet. There's somewhere around 150,000 jobs worldwide that is identified that we are short in cybersecurity that haven't even been named at this stage. That's how quickly that our environment is changing. Startups will continue to be significant. I think we, we look over the last five years, particularly startups has been a shining star for Fredericton region. We've been extremely successful. And then the strategic initiatives and relationships in itself is a priority. Uh, we aim, we're really aiming at focusing and building a, a, an army of collaborators. Um, what success le is led by in most cases today is the ability to be collaborative, the ability to recognize that, you know, one plus one doesn't equal two, it equals three or four or five. There's a multiplier effect of good collaboration, and we want to make sure we take advantage of that. Strategic initiatives then fall from our priorities, and some of those that I'll share with you are the agency's forum. Uh, that is also the forum that has now become the leadership team for, for COVID recovery. I have a slide on that uh, towards the end. But the agency forum is represented by those with interest in the economic and business activity here in this region. So it's the chamber, it's the airport, it's the, you know, it's the downtown and north side business associations, it's ONB. Um, you know, and, and we'll be adding members to that, that group as we move through the COVID recovery strategy. We've had a lot of success through approach of, of initiatives around the task force model. And we have three of them essentially at play uh, today, which is the natural resource task force. Um, one may say we don't have an awful lot of natural resource task force uh, activity, but the reality is there is a significant amount of activity that's in natural resources. And we want to make sure this, this community is prepared to take advantage of those opportunities, whether it be something like the system mine or whether it be something like the $1.5 billion being put into the Baldoon area uh, and the logistical uh, supply chain that's going to be needed to support that. Creative task or creative sector task force. Uh, we're going to hit the restart button on that. Um, you know, it's we haven't. Uh, you know, we haven't had the success that I, I would hope we have had. We would have for the creative sector. It's not because of, of not focused energy. It's because it needs some unique uh, services and support to it. And so we're gonna we're gonna go back to basics on that and and restrike that sector task force. It is an important element. Um, you know, I mean, when you look at something like the Harvest Jazz and Blues Festival being canceled this year because of COVID, uh, you'll see the significant impact of what creative, the creative sector does for our region. Um, you know, and when we, when we don't have that this year, that'll be a big void. Um, so we want to make sure that we're working on, on the creative sector as well. Um, newcomer and Partnerships. Um, the new, Newcomer Partnership Council is, is in its, I think, third or fourth year. And it really is meant to try to make sure that everybody that's focused on newcomer activity, whether it's attraction or settlement, that we are aligned and that we are pulling in the same direction. Um, we're going to continue to, in, to, to invest as, as immigration population growth is one of the most significant elements of our growth uh, capabilities or requirements. And then finally, you know, initiative, um, you know, everybody that drives down Knowledge Park Road probably knows what the cyber center is at this stage. Um, that building is coming to completion. We're going to be moving into leaseholds uh, within the next 30 to 45 days and there will be opening uh, and occupancy in, in the building by by the end of this year but it represents what has become a national uh, number one position for Fredericton in the leadership of cybersecurity. The cyber center is the single largest um, cyber investment in Canada today. It's the single largest infrastructure investment in cyber cyber direct dedicated services in Canada today. So we are holding a number one position nationally in our capabilities in cyber center. 
Um, I won't go into all the details, but when you look at the leadership that UNB has had and, and ONB with creating Cyber NB, which is a standalone organization focused on cyber, you know that there's a lot of energy and a lot of opportunity being created in the cyberspace. Next slide. And this is the result. This is a, a, a bit of a summary. Um, our, our report card is, is more extensive than this, but these are the results that we've been able to achieve on behalf of this community in 2019. There are 301 new jobs that we help support. Um, you know, it's important to note that we don't create a job at all. Uh, it's the entrepreneurs and the businesses that create those jobs. What we try to do is lay the groundwork and move the roadblock to allow them to do that. And in 301 times this year, we were able to help companies increase their, their employment in 2019. We had a, a great year on the startup um, element. There's 30 new startups in, in our region. And it's also important to note that, you know, a lot of people put framework around startups. Startups, you know, sometimes are articulated as being, you know, IT or ICT related uh, sort of firms. Our focus on startups is across multiple sectors. We believe that if you can wrap services around a high growth potential startup, such as an ICD or an AI type startup, we believe that you can put some of the same structures around, you know, uh, a, a more, maybe more normal or more regular, more, more normal startup, then we can help them to be successful. And I think it's proven uh, over the years, when you look at the five-year results of Planet Hatch, I think we're well over 230 or 240 startups over the, that period of time. And there's multiple hundreds of jobs and multiple millions of dollars of investment that have been placed in startups. And it become, you know, it become, it's certainly become a rallying point for the success of, of Freddie region. Last year, we had a phenomenal year with the, with the immigration activity. We had 1,500 newcomers land in our city. Uh, we also had three investment wins. So those are three brand new companies that have not been or were not in this region that are now here working in our region, creating wealth for, for business and, and employment for, for people. One of the ways we measure what we do is in the term of how we help companies through mentoring and coaching hours. Um, so we really try to make sure that we're getting full, um, our, full annualized labor amounts into our mentoring and coaching, uh, and we measure that so that we can, we can gauge whether we're increasing uh, the amount of support. And each year we've been able to exceed our forecast, and this year was no different. We have, you know, slightly over 40 or 4,000 hours of mentoring and coaching. Those are one-on-one -on -one sessions with um, businesses and entrepreneurs that are looking to grow in our region. Another item that, that goes under the radar quite often, but it does speak to the complexity of what we do is the startup visa application. So for, for folks or, or, or you know, people around the world that have intellectual property, typically coming out of universities, that have intellectual property that they're looking to create and grow, and they're also looking to move the, you know, that intellectual property and the, and the commercialization of commercialization of that to Canada, then we run a program where those individuals can come in and be part of the startup visa application process and they get to bring their startup into Planet Hatch and they get to participate in uh, becoming a newcomer of our community as well. An example of the investment dollars that we put in, uh, it can be seen in about 1.1 or 1.2 million dollars at ACOA have funded us to, to further invest in startups in the community and uh, we do that by way of impact loans. This particular slide that you see now is around the measurement, measuring success and for a number of years we have been sort of trying to have a more common sense discussion around what is happening from an economic development perspective and try to try to demonstrate that in ways that maybe everybody could understand a little 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 easier. When you look at the consumer spending as an example, those jobs that we've helped support, the companies have created, generated about $10 million of consumer spending in this region. So when you look around, you know, $4.7 million in transportation. So that's buying of cars and buying of, you know, motorcycles and the gas and services that you put in and the mechanical work and things that go into cars. And, you know, we got 1.1 million in just meals and groceries. And of that 10 million, you know, 2.25 million was in, in home utilities. So you look in each one of our communities, you know, in Maryland, or and Fredericton, there are homes that are being built in your jurisdiction that are the result of the people that have gained employment from the activity that we do. So at the end of the day, it's those 
specific, very pragmatic measurements that help us uh, describe to the community what it is that we do to support the, you know, the community to grow. And with that, I think I'll uh, throw it over to Sarah. She's going to spend some time talking about some of the uh, the local market activity. Thanks, Larry. Sorry, I always struggle with that unmute button. So in terms of economic growth and advocacy, uh, we've continued to demonstrate strong results in 2019 through the building and fostering of relationships that support these local markets and have played a key part in developing this thriving ecosystem that we're operating in. Growth activities ranging from trade commissioner visits, uh, investment attraction client site visits, to ongoing discussions with provincial and federal uh, government officials have always continued uh, to, to leverage our success uh, and will continue to do so in 2020. Local market growth, uh, building towards an end-to-end -end business concierge service tailored to the business owner uh, we always aim and, and stay engaged with the local market and be responsive to the existing needs. This includes building on the great partnerships with the like-minded organizations. Larry kind of uh, alluded to a little bit earlier with the agencies forum, uh, but we always want to maintain progress and collaboration in supporting this uh, market. Year to date, we've serviced over 600 mentoring hours that have contributed to over 150 FTEs within this market. Moving forward into 2020, uh, we've already begun meeting with clients and identifying future business needs that will ensure the economic growth in our community, especially with the ongoing situation right now. Uh, these future cap collaborations will include provincial partners uh, and have included, but will continue to include uh, provincial partners with uh, PEDAL, uh, Opportunities New Brunswick and more regional entities uh, to ensure that there's an end-to-end -end support system for our existing business owners. On the investment attraction side, uh, we've ongoing lead generation and pipeline development continues to be a priority uh, moving into the 2020 year with three attractions and over 17 client site visits. Uh, we do have a developed pipeline with qualified leads, uh, so it should make for an interesting 2020 provided that we can have some momentum uh, or time on our side. Uh, so cybersecurity continues to be the leading sector, but it must be noted that cybersecurity stretches across all sectors. It's a horizontal, it's not a vertical uh, priority. So it goes into natural resources, biotech, ICT, et cetera. Um, partnerships have been developed with CyberMB, BioNB, UMB Research Opportunities New Brunswick, along with Invest in Canada, a national organization that helps FDI activities and supports us in, in those endeavors. And we'll continue to work closely with these partnerships moving forward. Larry mentioned a little bit about the startup visa uh, priority and initiative. Um, we have had a really strong performance in 2019 with this, with this program. Uh, expression of interest numbers have, have always been really strong. We've, we've always been inundated with applications with 52 being received in 2019. Uh, but more notably is the quality of the applications has significantly Im improved uh, over the past few years so that it's been a part of the team at both Planet Hatch and Ignite, um, working diligently on what identifying the right candidates. Um, we're continuing to invest uh, our time into our strategic task force, Larry also mentioned, and that of course will always be a priority, but uh, one task force that we are also looking at, um, in addition to the Natural Resources Task Force and the Creative Sector Task Force, is that we're also look, always looking at emerging sectors. So one that may be of interest to us this year um, is the silver economy. So we're trying to drive entrepreneurial development and support in any new emerging areas. So that's always on our radar. Lastly, we always continue to work with our agencies forum, uh, most notably move to a weekly basis as opposed to a, a monthly, uh, just because of the situation. But just to know that the ongoing collaboration with like-minded organizations has always been a priority. Um, and these would include multiple departments for the city of Fredericton, Business Fredericton North, Downtown Fredericton Incorporated, the Fredericton Chamber of Commerce, the Fredericton International uh, Airport, St. Mary's First Nation, Opportunities New Brunswick, and of course, MP Jenica Atwin's office. Uh, many of you are here today, so thank you for joining us. Um, so that would be the the synapsis of the pillar of economic growth and advocacy. And to highlight the success in Planet Hatch and its endeavors in 2019, I'll hand it over to Adam 
the uh, director of Planet Hatch to talk about this more. Thanks, Sarah, and uh, good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> assuming everyone can hear me, it's a little bit different with this AGM, but I guess it's more comfortable coming to you from my basement. Um, so 2019 for Planet Hatch represented the first year in our new five-year strategic plan. And that plan is really focusing on developing globally competitive entrepreneurs and startup companies. We've had a ton of success uh, since Planet Hatch first opened in 2013, and now we're just raising the bar in terms of what we're hoping to achieve uh, working with you know, those entrepreneurs and startup companies. Um, as you can see with some of the results that are posted on this slide, uh, it certainly was a busy year for Planet Hatch. Um, we launched two new acceleration programs, uh, one being the Sales Accelerator, um, which is the uh, which had great success. We had five companies go through that program, um, which was designed to uh, take companies that were about a year or two into their business um, and were finding some success, but didn't have a sales playbook or the skill sets to be able to execute on it. Um, those five companies, after completing the program, saw an average uh, increase in their monthly recurring revenue of over 190%. Um, we also launched the Startup Accelerator, which was just reformatting an old program and had uh, five companies go through that program as well, uh, creating new startups and bringing their ideas to market. We also, Larry referenced uh, earlier, worked in 2019 to uh, launch a new immigration strategy, which will be discussed in further depth a little bit later. But as part of that strategy, uh, the Business Immigrant Essentials Program, or previously known as the BIMP Program, which was run very successfully by the Fredericton Chamber of Commerce for 10 years, that transferred over to Planet Hatch to uh, run on an ongoing basis under our umbrella of other entrepreneurial support programs. Um, we were able to uh, have a very successful transition working with the Chamber and launch the first cohort of that program in the fall of 2019 with four participating businesses. Um, Hannah Bell Weaver, Larry mentioned earlier, has uh, come on board as our program coordinator and she deserves a lot of credit for all of the success with the programs. On business counseling, you'll know uh, Kelly Smith, our business startup specialist. Um, she spends a lot of her time working one-on-one -on -one with uh, entrepreneurs as they move their businesses forward. Um, has, again, been an incredibly busy year with great results, 30 new startups, and uh, over 95 jobs that are associated to those startups being created. Um, on the event side, remember events, those things we used to go to as a team <laughs> or as a group? Um, hard to remember, but uh, we did have them. And in 2019, there were over 80 events uh, with nearly 2,800 uh, people walking through the doors of Planet Hatch. And uh, Daniel Minchin has joined the team as operations coordinator. He will be responsible for organizing those events, likely in a digital format for the foreseeable future. But we still plan to, uh, to do that over 2020. And certainly 2019 was a great year for our events. Um, all of this work um, was uh, just recently recognized publicly um, as Planet Hatch received the uh, Enterprise Support Award as part of the National Canny Awards. Um, and the Canny Awards are the new iteration of what used to be called the Startup Canada Awards. And so we were very honored uh, last week when uh, we were announced publicly as the winner for the Enterprise Support Award in the Atlantic Canadian region. Um, and I think really for, for the Startup Canada, if you look over the past several years, um, Fredericton has been uh, really, uh, all of the work that has been taking place in the startup space in Fredericton has been consistently recognized um, by national organizations like Startup Canada. We are the only winners from Fredericton this year. Uh, Keith McIntosh from PQA and Plato Testing has been recognized, as well as Kynova Bioworks, which uh, was one of our members uh, a couple of years ago. And so we're really excited to see uh, the success and the hard work in the startup community in Fredericton continue to be recognized at a national level and has been uh, for the past five or six years. Um, so that's the update on the Planet Hatch side. I'll turn it over to Janet Mosier now, uh, who will speak more uh, in depth about the immigration uh, aspect of our work. 
Thanks very much, Adam. Um, so just to start, um, excuse me, I've got a bit of frog in my throat. Um, as Larry mentioned earlier, the third pillar of Ignite strategy is population growth and the workforce strategy. Uh, this pillar is of great importance to our organization and consists of four main areas, which include the immigration strategy, the local immigration partnership, otherwise known as LIP, uh, attraction, repatriation and retention, and workforce development. As the Managing Director of Immigration Services, I'm responsible for the oversight of Fredericton's immigration strategy as well as the local immigration partnership. Immigration must be and remain at the forefront of economic development to ensure the city's population growth targets are met to stimulate the local economy and to develop more inclusive uh, and diverse workplaces. Within the current growth strategy of the City of Fredericton, it is indicated that we must increase our population by 32,000 new residents by the year 2043. Although this is, is a great challenge, uh, we are well aligned currently and moving forward to not only achieve this goal, but also to surpass it by leveraging and supercharging our support systems. Our goals include the reduction of redundancy, streamline efficiencies, and increase the profile of immigration within the greater Fredericton region. Currently in our second year of Ignite Fredericton's five-year strategy, we have successfully achieved phase one during year one in 2019. Also within the strategic planning goals, we are now also into our fourth year of the local immigration partnership. With our key partners out, uh, with our key partners on side with, at the Fredericton Chamber of Commerce, who leads our advocacy, uh, the Multicultural Association of Fredericton supporting settlement services, we are all very well positioned in our alignment to achieve results, the results we have set in play on the economic development side of immigration. Uh, just to follow in Larry's uh, words, we are forming an army of collaborators in our region. The Fredericton Lip also acts as a repository of collected information supplied by our local stakeholder agencies. This information generates the directions taken to ensure Immigration Fredericton is on side with the realities that are facing newcomers and any needs um, or supporting any gaps within the local immigrant communities and associations. And how also we, as uh, the orchestra of strategic planning, set the stage to uh, continued adoption of forward-looking leadership and immigration with, with innovation through dedicated resources and new initiatives. With close to 100 volunteers involved in our five subcommittee, working subcommittee uh, of the LIP and over 20 stakeholder community partners sitting on our Newcomer Partnership Council Committee, we are assuring that all of the needs of immigrant serving agencies and newcomers are being supported in our city and our surrounding areas. Thanks very much. Okay, uh, moving on, um, when we say population growth, the function of attraction and retention of those you attract are the most significant functions. It is an established fact that in order to retain, we have to attract well, and that is the mantra we adopted for all our attraction activities for 2019. Um, we identified specific workforce skill set gaps and we led missions to locations that were identified to supply the workforce needed to address those gaps. In terms of exploratory meetings with entrepreneurial immigrants, we shifted our approach from a mere presentation to a more personalized sales pitch sort of presentations, highlighting our key performing industries, our startup communities, and the various supports provided by Ignite and Planetash to all these budding entrepreneurs. As you may know, the turnaround time for these activities goes well beyond a year, so with this strategy, we expect to see some very favorable outcomes in the coming years. Nevertheless, we were able to overachieve our target of landed immigrants by a large percentage in 2019, and we have set even more stringent targets for 2020 and beyond. With reference to workforce development, we tried to set the foot in the right direction by taking up a collaborative approach with all our relevant stakeholders. 
We organized a number of large scale as well as limited scale job fairs, industry specific workforce events targeted towards particular skill sets, consultations and referrals, all while keeping our partners at the Department of uh, Post-Secondary Education Training and Labor, Opportunities New Brunswick and the Multicultural Association of Fredericton engaged in the process. We also partnered with uh, the student employment offices at post-secondary institutions like UNB and NBCC to provide the right outreach to students for job placements. International students are defined as a priority audience in our immigration strategy, and we believe that our retention efforts targeted towards students have better prospects of achieving results. Moving forward, um, the current year has certainly not turned out in the way we would have liked it to, but there is a whole new set of opportunities that we are exploring and bringing into action. And hopefully you would see the results of our transitioning work practices in the near future. With that, I thank you all for your never ending so trust and support. And I hand over the floor to Wade to talk about infrastructure and strategic investments. Thank you, Nasheen. Knowledge Park is Fredericton's innovation district hub and high tech cluster with 50 plus acre campus offering 300,000 square feet of class A office space. We are a member of the Association of University Research Park, a network of 26 R&T Park campuses across Canada and 200 plus in North America. The Cyber Center is our newest addition, 135,000 square foot building with redundant and diversified commercial power on-site backup generation, 96 hours post-disaster capability, diversified and redundant data connectivity and physical and electronic security layers 24-7, 365 days. <clears throat> Excuse me. This allows for collaboration with leading cybersecurity R&D organizations, IoT manufacturers, and industry partners to securely develop, maintain, and operate mission cr critical systems for the protection of critical infrastructure. I'd like to welcome Tony McFawn as our new operations manager to oversee the operations and tenant fit ups for the cyber building, as well as the day to day operations on our existing Knowledge Park buildings. We are expecting the first tenants in the cyber building to be opening early 2021. Thank you. I'll now pass it over to Larry. Thanks, Wade. Um, and look, great job, everybody. And if, if, uh, if we could do a virtual round of applause, this would be the appropriate time to do that. Unfortunately, I'm not sure how that would work in, in a virtual world, but certainly, um, you know, kudos to, to the team. Um, you know, I know it's hard to wrap, a, you know, a year up in, in a few slides, um, and it is worth taking the time to go through those. Um, during the, the, the recent slides from Sarah and Adam and, and Wade and Sheen and, and Janet, talked about a lot of the, the, the things that we've been able to accomplish. One of the things that I think we 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 can always do better on is 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 being recognized and standing up and actually you know tooting our own horn. Uh, we don't do that enough. Uh, not only just in Fredericton, but in our region, it's an Atlantic Canada sort of thing. We don't stand up and and tell the stories that we have that are leading and world world specific. But um, nonetheless, on the rewards and recognition slide. It does give you some sense of the things that we're able to accomplish. Uh, Adam touched on on the startup award that Planet Hatch just received, um, and it's a it's a lot more significant than I think he gave it credit to. Um, and hopefully he they'll they'll be able to move on and become the national winner. But over the last four or five years, maybe even six, um, we Fredericton has always had either regional winners or national winners in a number of categories. Um, you know, and last year we, we were able to achieve another national winner. So, um, and that's really where Fredericton stands on the, on the, on the national stage uh, and gets the accolades that it deserves from being number one in, in a lot of entrepreneurial activity that we lead. On this slide are just, are just some examples. You know, we work uh, extensively with inside the professional economic development arenas. Uh, we're often recognized by IDAC and EDAC in terms of awards, and there's just some of those that were just highlighted on this on this page. Um, again, it's 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 important for us to continue to focus and be the stewards of of our of our economy and make sure that that when the opportunity to be recognized. Uh, we take advantage of that and we actually, um, you know, turn that into a positive for this region to be able to, to continue to grow and expand. 
2020 priorities. We're going to wrap up here in a couple of slides, um, but we would be remiss if we didn't recognize that we are not in the same world that we were in a few weeks back. Uh, it has significantly changed. Um, and, you know, um, I don't think we want to go back to the normal that we had. And it's not because I think we should stay in confusion and up, upheaval, but there are an awful lot of opportunities that are being recognized through the, through the crisis that we have just lived. And if we don't take advantage of those crises or of those opportunities from the crisis, then you know, sort of uh, bad on us. We, we, we need to be prepared and ready. Um, we need to move things forward. And when you look at something like healthcare, at one point in time during the COVID uh, height, we were at 35% or thereabouts. Um, a level of occupancy in our in our in our in our emergency rooms. That's not because people weren't still having heart attacks, et cetera. It was because um, we were aligning to the services in a way that they were created, um, and that we were forced into that by COVID. But there's an example of the opportunity. So what we've done, we transitioned our for agency forum into what will be our our, our recovery leadership team. And we see that there's four, three elements to the recovery. The first phase we are almost ended with, which is the primary phase, and it's one of reaction. It's, it's just simply trying to keep the lights on, answer the urgent questions, get information to the right people. Uh, and, and the chamber played a significant role in this community and should be commended for the work they've done in terms of the response phase. Uh, the chamber is part of the, the, the agency forum and will continue to be engaged in, in the recovery activity as well as all the members of the, of the forum. We're now just entering what we describe as phase two, which is really becoming more proactive. It's where businesses start to take control back and begin to figure out ways of operating in the new, in the new world or find new opportunities. Um, and one of the first activities we're doing in this particular phase is doing a further deeper assessment of the impacts and, and trying to make sure that we're developing programs that support that. And the third phase, which is going to be the longest phase, and we, we would project that to be you know, well over two years, this phase is about rebuilding the confidence and getting back to the strategic nature of, of stewardness, stewardness of, our, of our economic development agenda. And, and it's also a time where we've been able to expand our partnerships and deepen the, the relationship that we have. And you'll notice on this slide and the next slide, there's a couple of testimonials or not testimonials, but comments from what sometimes in the past, in particular, you know, we might've been seen as competitors. You know, uh, Susie Campos, who's the CEO of Moncton, you know, recognizes that the three uh, urban centers need to work very closely together. Uh, her and Rondette and myself, um, you know, we continually talk about the opportunity that we have for New Brunswick. Um, it's not just opportunities for, for Freddie and St. John or Moncton. So, that, so in 2020, a good amount of our priorities and efforts will be put towards the recovery. And in the last slide, this is just to summarize for you a little bit of a, a insight as to what 2020 also has in store. Uh, we're going to continue to work on our task force models. Uh, we're going to continue to invest in entrepreneurship and as Adam talks about having globally competitive companies, uh, obviously cybersecurity is going to receive a significant amount of attention and investment. It is important for us to make sure we're still attracting uh, new uh, dollars to our region, new investment. So investment attraction will be continue uh, to be part of what, what, uh, what Ignite works on on a daily basis. Population growth, as Janet mentioned and, and Nosheen, um, you know, without population growth, a lot of these other initiatives will not be successful. And then finally, the, the local market. Uh, we, we stress always that our, our economy is built on the SME marketplace and we need to invest and need to make sure that we are continuing to support the local market growth. And if you look at programs that are, you know, like, like buy local, shop local, love Fredericton, love the region, all of those sort of initiatives are key to having the local market grow and, and recovery from, from COVID. And with that, um, I really appreciate and thank uh, everybody that attended today. Um, you know, we're certainly open to questions and feedback. Please send us uh, any of your comments. Uh, we, we do have a chat channel here. If you want to make comments or, or, or give us some feedback, we'd appreciate it. Uh, but this brings to the end the uh, community report segment, and uh, we'll, we'll get geared up and ready to start the, uh, the formal AGM aspect of Ignite Fredericton. Thank you all and look, thanks to the team that's, uh, that's 
that's uh, worked on today and pulled it off. Thank you.